Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. Today I would like to explain in detail how Dolby Vision 4.0 works in Mystica Boutique and Ultima. So stay focused and let's go! Just for the heads up, currently Dolby Vision 2.9 and 4.0 are being supported in Mystica. Now let's start with the license. If you don't have it, as soon as you add the Dolby Vision effect, you will get a warning message indicating the directory where you should move it in case you don't have it correctly installed. Without the license, you will be able to analyze each shot and export it, but you won't be allowed to use any of the color tools and create new trims. If you own the license, please make sure you have it in the correct directory. Dolby Vision is designed to be used in HDR projects to create the different versions using the HDR master as a reference. Therefore, the input for Dolby Vision must be PQ as Gamma Curve and P3 or Rec 2020 as Gamut. For example, in this situation, I am using Rec 2020 and PQ at 4000 nits. Now, click on the Dolby Manager Select the Dolby Vision version that you want to use for your project, in this case version 4, then in Master Display, you have to select the profile that fits the settings of the reference monitor that has been used for the grading. In my case again is Rec 2020 PQ 4000 nits. Finally, here you choose the target, the secondary version that you want to create and preview using Dolby Vision. In this case, I will go for the SDR version in Rec 709 and 100 nits. Click Accept and now, on the top of your timeline, you can add the Dolby Vision effect. Keep in mind that you cannot mix Dolby Vision effects from versions 2.9 and 4. If you try to do it, Mystica will show you a message asking to replace or delete the effects that are different from the version selected in the Dolby Manager. Please note that Dolby Vision 4.0 only supports internal CMU. With all set, click on the Dolby Vision effect and the first thing you always have to do is to analyze each shot. So click Analysis and then Perform Analysis and make sure you are on the first frame. Then click Play. Dolby will automatically analyze your HDR color grading and convert it to your target. In our case, remember was Rec 709 100 nits. When the analysis is done, you will see the complete message here. To do it automatically to all your timeline, go to the first shot, set perform and propagate perform analysis and analysis state to the rest of your shots. Then go back to the timeline and hit play. When you have a letterbox in your shots, before the analysis you will have to click on settings and change the aspect ratio here to this shot instead of global. Then set the aspect ratio on the value and now Dolby won't analyze the letterbox. If you want to apply that globally, you can propagate both values or directly go to the Dolby Manager and set that option here, keeping the global parameter in all the Dolby Vision effects. Once the analysis process is done, you can modify the result with the trim controls, which includes the traditional lift gamma gain controls and this amazing hexagon tool that allows you to modify saturation and tone at the same time. If you move it up and down, you modify saturation and side by side the tone. You can also change all these values in the trim parameters. By default, the first trim is set to Rec 709, and because that was our target, we preview the result of the color adjustments that we are doing here. In order to create different versions, we can add more trims. You cannot have duplicated trims. If this happens, Mystica will let you know with this message. So for example, 
If I want to create and control another version in PQREC 2020 at 600 nits, I need to create a secondary trim with that profile and then go to the Dolby Manager and change the target there in order to preview my adjustments. If now I change the settings in the REC709 version, we won't see anything as I have to set it again in the Dolby Manager. So the target option is important to select and preview your different versions. It is not necessary to create trims for every version. For example, if we don't set a REC709 version in any of our trims, Dolby Vision will generate it automatically during the export by interpolating the values of the created trims. So, as a general approach, create the trims for those versions you want to fully control. At the beginning of the video, I said that the Dolby Vision effect always has to be on top of your stack. But there's only one effect in Mystica that can be over it and it is the fade effect. The last step is to export the metadata generated by Dolby Vision. There are two ways to do it. We can export the metadata as a separated XML file without rendering the image. To do that, go to Edit, Macros and click in Dolby Export. Remember to set the edit marks in the time space segment that you want to export. The second option is by rendering the image using the Dolby Vision HDR Master format. This format allows the use of three different codecs, EXR, TIFF and J2K. This option will render the image with the metadata embedded. You can import any XML metadata files and rendered files into the time space and Mystica will show that metadata as Dolby Vision effects. Note how the dissolve area is recreated with a Dolby Vision effect animated with the result of that dissolve. If the metadata has different settings that they want selected in the Dolby Manager, Mystica will ask to change those settings using the imported metadata as reference. Remember, the whole Dolby Vision workflow should be done once your HDR master version is finished as this version is the reference that Dolby Vision uses to create the secondary versions. I hope you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing if you want to keep up with the news about Mystica. Thanks for watching and see you!